Welcome back. So despite San Diego County beginning to reopen, the need for food and food banks has not slowed down. Joining us with an update on how things are looking right now, we go to CEO and president of the San Diego Food Bank, Jim Floros. Good morning, Jim. Happy morning, Sunday. Happy Sunday morning. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Bring us up to speed. Here we are. It is April 2021. And, uh, you know, just kind of give us the rundown first on, you know, some stats, maybe where, you know, the numbers are and how many people or families need food at this point. Well, you know, the need is still really high. You know, it ebbs and flows. Uh, you know, a stimulus check comes out, and then we may see a little bit of a dip in our distributions. But, you know, running concurrently with the COVID crisis is a full-blown recession, and this is such a big community focus on hospitality and, you know, conventions and hotels and restaurants. There's a lot of hardship uh, in that industry alone, and we, we're going to see an increased need for many years to come. Mm. You know, is there a science to food banking if you will there really is i mean you know uh going to a parking lot and distributing food is fine it does help people for that moment uh, in time but really that's not a really systematic consistent reliable way of distributing food we uh, entered into kind of a, a very innovative concept back in july of last year our super pantry program so you set up these super pantries in the communities where people live they're open at least three days a week and now people can go right down the street get the food they need if they miss Tuesday, no problem because it's open on Wednesday. That's really the way that you provide food to people in a reliable way that frees them up to be able to go to school, to go to work, and really our ultimate goal in everything we do is about lifting people out of poverty and helping them become self-sufficient. Making them go wait in line for hours at a food distribution is really not, uh, really lacks client dignity. Wow, yeah, I can see that. And you know, as we take a look back at, you know, the, the drives and just how it all happens obviously you have a number of paid staff members but the volunteers that you know contribute to this cost is huge and in fact this past week was volunteer appreciation week remind us the role that volunteers have in making the san diego food bank successful well, you know, any nonprofit will tell you that their volunteers are the lifeblood of their organization, and I know that that's uh, true. But with us, they're actually an integral part of our supply chain. We have over 20,000 registered volunteers in any typical year, 35, 36,000 volunteer visits a year, and they sort the food, they package the food, and literally what volunteers do on a Wednesday is going out um, on a Thursday, and one of the uh, great parts about this uh, free labor is it's worth about $3 million a year in free labor. It allows us to put more donor dollars directly uh, to service. And we had a number of uh, food banks up and down the state that struggled because their volunteers stopped coming in. Mm. But not San Diego. We put the call out for individuals. Some food banks had to resort to using the National Guard, not the San Diego Food Bank. Uh, our community rallied around us, and we have about uh, three shifts, 75 volunteers every single day. Uh, except for on Sunday at the food bank, and uh, they're really helping us meet the need in the community. That's so awesome. And then, you know, the food bank is, you know, you you guys are always keeping in mind uh, what's happening, where we are, where we're at in, you know, the calendar year, obviously. And, you know, we just celebrated Earth Day, if you will. You know, talk to us about, you know, some may wonder, well, how does the San Diego Food Bank, um, you know, what kind of environmental efforts do you guys do? You know, last week hit on a couple of key points uh, for us once, obviously Volunteer Appreciation Week and then also Earth Day. We found out maybe five or six years ago that if we were more environmentally conscious, we could actually save money, which would mean more money going towards helping people in need. So we in in implemented a number of different things. Uh, phase change of material in our freezer allows us to turn our compressors off at seven o'clock at night. So that saves energy. Uh, we do on-site yeah. composting and recycling. So we were putting, you know, half a million pounds, 600,000 pounds a year of uh, refuse in the landfill. Now we're a zero waste facility. We diverted over a million pounds of food last year. Um, that saves us money. Plus mm -hmm. obviously it helps the environment. And we take that compost, we have technology that can take food product and turn to compost in five days. We give that to our nonprofit partners uh, who have um, community gardens. So again, about being a nutrition bank and growing fresh fruit and vegetables. 
So that helps uh, with that. And then we have 1,400 solar panels uh, on our roof. That saves us about $120,000 uh, a year, which equates to about 600,000 meals. So, you know, we worked really hard on that. We've won a bunch of awards. The one I probably um, am most fond of is we were awarded a LEED Gold version four award for mm -hmm. our warehouse. And they tell me we were the first uh, food warehouse in the world to achieve that. That is so awesome, Jim. Well, thank you so much for touching base with us. It's so important um, because as your work continues, um, more families are getting fed and getting the resources that they need in other areas as well. So it's it's great to see your face. What uh, what did you think of the game last night? The you know what? Game. Win or lose, we're playing the Dodgers really uh, tough, and it's really great baseball, great uh, entertainment, and I think it's going to be a great season. That rivalry is really heating up, so it's a lot of fun. All right. Jim Floros, thank you so much. We'll see you. You're the best. Thank you.